If we do get AGI, it would just be so hard to contain it. If you didn't release ChatGPT, you wouldn't have been able to just like know that this is a feature people really wanted. Just imagine this scaled up like 100x, 1000x, integrated into all our senses, maybe even into our minds. I became more convinced of our glorious transhumanist future. I want to talk about acceleration. Yep. What does it mean to feel the acceleration for you? I think the real bottleneck is just we got to make them smarter. Mm -hmm. I don't like it, they're they're already so cheap. It's like two cents per million tokens or something ridiculous. Yeah. I think the, the the real bottleneck for me using them more is not their price, but them being more useful, being able to take over more parts of the economy. Do you think that intelligence is all we need? Do we even need to map the different parts of like the skill tree that humans have, like charisma, wisdom? Like the AIs are getting more intelligent, but they're already like maxed out on wisdom, right? There has been this trend in AI where whenever there's a big breakthrough, we think we've automated a large part of what intelligence is. And in fact, in retrospect, it's clear that it was only a beginning. So the big example here is when Deep Blue came out and beat Kar uh, Kasparov at chess. People thought that this was like a big breakthrough in intelligence in general, because we thought that what chess required was the general intelligence. And yeah. you might have heard this concept of AI complete problems, where if you solve this problem, then you've solved intelligence. So people yeah. said that about self-driving. The Turing test was supposed to be to, uh, AI complete. Yep. We've gone through all of these subcomponents of intelligence, and afterwards we realized there's actually still more left to it. The the thing that's sort of underrated is not even agency per se, although that's a part of it. I think the thing that's underrated is we humans have this global hive mind mm -hmm. where the reason we can make iPhones and we can make uh, buildings and whatever is not just intelligence and also not just agency. It's the fact that there's so much specialization, there's so much capital deepening. People are just like tr doing things, trying different ideas. Uh, AIs need to be smarter in order to do that. They need to have more agency in order to do that. But once they can, you just if you have millions of AIs running around trying different things, that's that's when we get the real acceleration and you'll feel it in your blood. How did you feel this sort of like gib oh, yeah. Ghibli moment? So to me, I get very excited about it because it's like having any human be able to create beautiful images out of text is fantastic. Yes. I became more convinced of our glorious transhumanist future. You're getting a glimpse just from these like early images of how cool and beautiful the things AI makes or helps us make will be. Just imagine this scaled up like 100x, 1000x, integrated into all our senses, maybe even into our minds, integrated into the way we relate with the people we care about and so forth. Uh, yeah, I'm just like, the future could be really beautiful. We've seen these like accelerating trends before, nuclear energy, energy too, too, too cheap to meter, has been talked about before, and we have hit stagnation. Like it is yeah. possible that just something can break in our society and all these different economic and political forces can align to just say, hey, you know what? Nuclear energy is not going to double every couple of years, and it didn't. What is your P stagnation? Like just your probability that something happens, maybe people freak out, maybe there's just, you know, one world government or something, but we actually see AI stall for a significant amount of time, like 50 years, there's no intelligence explosion, purely for stagnation reasons. Look, we can keep increasing compute that we're putting into these systems for maybe the next five, 10 years, because computers is just growing at this ridiculous rate, where in, yep. in three years, we're gonna have 10x the amount of com global AI compute that we have right now. But at some point, right now we're spending 2% of GDP on compute and data centers and stuff like that. You can't just keep like 10xing yeah. that yeah. <laughs> forever. If somehow this whole deep learning paradigm is wrong and we just like totally miss the boat somehow, then I can see it happening and that's how I give it a 10, 20%. Otherwise, if we do get AGI, I'm of the opinion that we're not it would just be so hard to contain it. Like it's an incredibly powerful technology. Even if there's no intelligence explosion, even if it doesn't help you make an ASI or something, just yeah. AGI alone sure. is like would just make the economy explode and uh, yeah. all kinds of crazy shit. I, I mean, on the on the like, there's there's a little bit of a force of deceleration, like the GDP question, but also just I've had this idea that like no matter how intelligent you are, you can't break the laws of physics. At a certain point, you need to like get the sand out of the ground and turn That's it right. into silicon. And like at a certain point, just moving the sand around fast enough, even yeah. at light speed, you're not 10 xing every two years. And so mm -hmm. it feels like there could be a slowing down even as we're having the robots do basically everything. It's like the robots are still maxed out by physics. I don't know. I was thinking about this this morning, actually. Um, and the intuition I was uh, thinking about is, so since 1750s, we've had 2% economic growth in the world. 
Before that, it was like a tenth of that, right? Point two percent. If you were around in the fifteen hundreds or one thousand, and somebody said there there'd be like two percent growth, I think you might, given your reference class, have been like, look, it just takes a long time to learn how to artificially select crops and how to build mm-hmm. like new structures and aqueducts and whatever. It just that, that like t- that is a process that takes a while. So why do you think you're just going to be going through like yeah. increasing that two three percent a year and in retrospect, it is like a really weird. You look at the last hundred years of history. Yeah. Um, we're discovering all these new things in uh, uh, physics and chemistry and so forth. Yeah. The last 50 years, we're like, we start with a transistor and now we're talking on this magical screen. Yep. Um, and that was just like, physics didn't bottleneck that. I think mm-hmm. like you get another 10x and I don't see any in principle reason why at the next 10x of physics is like, just would not allow the robots to move fast enough. So, yeah, I mean, certainly on the GDP question, I, I, I think the energy question is like maybe a little bit murkier, but then there's probably other ways to optimize and and still get those GDP lifts, even with uh, even with energy growing at like a more reasonable, less explosive rate. So I, I think I agree with you there. What's your sort of broad take on on Apple's position and, and how mm. they've been approaching uh, everything in AI? They're not AGI filled enough, you know, like <laughs> they, they, if you treat it like another feature. Well, I mean, even if you treat it like another feature, it's like mysterious why Siri doesn't work on my phone. But um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, like it's, it's, it's like it's like more people, basically. And mm. if you take that seriously, you're not just going to be like, oh, and we, the, the 25th department in our complex is about uh, at making Siri better at speaking or something. No, it's like. Mm-hmm. This is this is the future. Yeah. And uh, then that's is that the that that then becomes like the gigabull case for safe super intelligence, meaning like none of the features or like consumer applications really matter at all today and you shouldn't even release them and you should just sort of accelerate towards the mm-hmm. the end goal that enables all the other goals. I think maybe s- somewhere in between. If you didn't release ChatGPT, you wouldn't have been able to just like know that this is a feature people really wanted. And I wonder if other things that other like features of AGI will be similar, where if you don't deploy it to a bunch of engineers on cursor, you just like won't know what it would actually make something a good coding bot. The counter argument to this, and I think what the SSI people would say is that they actually are deploying, but they're deploying towards the one thing they care about, which is accelerating AI research. And they don't need to do that mm-hmm. externally. They can just do that internally. The basic question is, can you get this like closed loop where you build the AIs which are helping you accelerate AI research, dot, 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 super intelligence? Um, I'm like 50-50 on that question. Um, so, but that, that yeah. other 50% is like a big deal. Yeah you, yeah, you you mentioned AGI pilled. Is there a difference between AGI pilled and ASI pilled and why... Do OpenAI co-founders seem incapable of starting anything but an, a foundation model? There's AGI pill, then there's like transformative AI pill, where you say, look, even if they're just like humans, if they have the advantages that AIs will just intrinsically have because of the fact that they're digital, which yeah. is the fact that they can be copied with all of their brain, all of their knowledge, right? So think yeah. of the most skilled engineer in your company, like Jeff Dean or Elias Hetzkover. Yeah. You can like copy that person with all their tasks and knowledge and everything. You can merge different copies. You can scale and distill, distill AGIs. Those advantages alone and the fact that there will be billions of copies as we increase the amount of compute in the world, that alone is enough for transformation in the sense of, yeah. Going from, you know, like what we were like before the industrial revolution to the industrial revolution pace of growth. And so I think somebody can be AGI pill in the sense they say like, yeah, I expect like human level intelligence to emerge in the next 10 years. But they still don't take that seriously as in like, OK, well, what does that imply about what is happening through the economy? Does that just mean like, oh, you've got a smart personal assistant or does it mean like, no, we're in a, we're in a very different growth regime? 22 year olds right now are coming in to their sort of careers and they're saying like, well, everybody's going to be paper clipped in a few years. Like you've got to sort of like create value and capture it now so that you're okay in this sort of like AGI Mm -hmm. future. I do feel like that's maybe sort of common fear throughout history, Mm -hmm. right? Where there's like people have this sort of pending sense of doom uh, sometimes. But do you think that's like, you know, uh, what would you say to somebody that, that had that sense? I think the way to model out the next few years from a career trajectory is you'll just have 100 extra leverage. But um, you want to be in a position where you can use that leverage. There's a common thing, and I'm sure you experience this now as well, is that as you advance in your career, before you're like, I've got a bunch of time, but I don't know what to work on. And after you're further along, you're like, I have no time, but there's like a thousand different ideas I have for um, 
things that would be super valuable or I think would go really well or something. So that I think what you should do is just get to a point where in whatever you think is interesting or care about, you're at the frontier and can see what the problem space actually looks like. If you care about AI, I would really recommend moving to SF and then just start working on problems and, um, you know, use the leverage that AI gives you. And if you end up getting paper clipped, it's like, <laughs> look, you, you, what's the point of like you personally, what's the point of that you like not doing anything worrying about that in the 80% of the world or 90% of the world where we don't get paper clipped? Um, you will get to say you worked on something really cool at a time that was really important in the history of humanity. That's great. Well said. Thanks for coming great. on. This is fantastic. This is fun, guys. We got to have you back. Yeah. This is really, really awesome. Let's make it a regular yeah. thing. Thank you guys Cheers. so much for having me on.